Hi, this is the OCR 21st Century Science uh, revision videos for unit P4, which is explaining motion. We're going to look at vertical forces, specifically reaction forces and air resistance. Now, we encountered reaction forces in our first lesson, and I just want to recap on that idea. So, when an object is placed on a surface, that surface will actually squash by just the tiniest microscopic amount. Now, when you try and squash an object, such as this tabletop, uh, and even when you push down on a tabletop that feels solid, you are actually squashing it by a tiny amount. Uh, and the weight of the object pushing down causes that tiny squashing, and the surface itself will then push back with its interaction pair force uh, because it's been squashed. So this is known as a reaction force. And the downward force technically is called weight, although people often label it as gravity. Uh, technically speaking, it's called the weight. So the reaction force is always equal and opposite. So if something is stationary, resting on a solid surface, the reason it's not falling through that surface is because there are two forces interacting here and they are equal and opposite. And if the two forces are equal and opposite, uh, then we say the forces are balanced. So that's reaction forces. Air resistance forces. Now if you drop an object, especially something that's quite light, so a cupcake case for example, as you drop it, what you find happening is that uh, it starts to speed up so it starts falling by bigger and bigger amounts but then very soon it doesn't speed up anymore so at the beginning it's accelerating but then for the remainder of its journey it's going at steady speed so if an object is light um, then the air will have a big impact on it now the force is acting on this uh, cupcake case are the weight pulling it down and then the faster it goes the more the air particles are colliding with it and bouncing off it and therefore they create an upwards force called air resistance and the faster something goes the more air resistance there is so faster speed equals more air resistance now eventually when an object is falling the weight force will become balanced by the air resistance force and in that situation then the object continues to fall at a steady speed so the reason that an object reaches a steady speed when it falls is because its weight force is constant but as it gets faster the air resistance gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, the air resistance force matches the weight force. And when those two forces are balanced, then the speed does not change. So whatever speed it got to before those were balanced, then its speed will stay the same. And that's known as the terminal velocity. So the terminal velocity of an object when it's falling is its maximum speed. And every object has its terminal velocity and it really depends on two factors it depends on the mass of the object and it depends on the amount of air resistance offered by the object uh, so different objects have different terminal velocities uh, a human who falls out of a plane without a parachute will have a very high terminal velocity because they will need to go very fast in order for their weight force to be matched by their air resistance However, a parachutist, someone who opens a parachute which has got a big amount of air resistance, they will find that their weight force is very quickly matched by the air resistance force because of the amount of surface area. And so someone in a parachute has got a much lower terminal velocity than someone without a parachute because they don't need to go so fast before the air resistance matches the weight. And in fact, they're going at such a speed uh, that when they hit the ground, 
they're actually going slow enough to survive the, the, the fall whereas obviously someone who jumps out of an aeroplane without a parachute the most likely consequence for them is that they're going so fast that they'll hit the ground at high velocity and therefore they won't survive the fall but with a parachute you have a much bigger air resistance for a much lower speed your terminal velocity is much smaller and so you drift down at a much lower speed so one of those myths about dropping a, a, a you know a five pence piece from the Eiffel Tower and it would kill someone simply isn't true because dropping a five pence piece from the Eiffel Tower after a few meters of falling the air resistance will match the, match the weight and the five pence piece won't fall any faster. So it doesn't really matter if you drop a five pence piece from two stories up or a thousand stories up, it will still hit the ground at the same speed because it will reach its terminal velocity quite quickly.